morning hours when those heavier bands move through. You can see Lafayette, according to the radar estimate, just shy of three inches. But I think these models underdo just how heavy the tropical rain. So we can probably add another inch to all these totals. So I would say probably close to three to four inches for Lafayette. Southern portions of the parish, though, you do see getting closer to that five, six, maybe seven inches of rain for Youngsville. That's why we've seen a bit more flooding in those communities. And then as you get into the western portion of Iberia Parish, this has been the hot spot, mainly Jefferson Island down to Avery Island and some of those areas where we've seen eight to 10 inches of rain over towards New Iberia. A little bit closer to the five, six, maybe seven inches of rain, but they've also been dealing with widespread street flooding in a large portion of those areas that extends down into portions of St. Mary Parish, Delcom. You've been dealing with some flooding again, anywhere from seven to eight inches of rain possibly falling into some of those locations. So those are the rain totals that we've seen, at least as far as the hot spots. Down closer to the Gulf Coast, we continue to have coastal flood warnings that will continue into early port of Monday morning as those waters continue to get pushed up, where we could see flooding anywhere from three to five feet from any of those communities. So anywhere around the point down through St. Mary Parish and up into Lydia, that's where you can continue to see high waters of three to five feet from the storm surge getting pushed on. And I expect those waters to continue to remain high. It won't be until maybe Tuesday or Wednesday before we finally start to see those waters come down a little bit. Here's the big picture look at what's going on across Barry. So you can see Barry mainly now up across the highway um, I-20 corridor beginning to make its way off to the north and northeast. That is helping to wrap around all this convection. So you can see deep tropical moisture continues out way into the Gulf of Mexico. So that's what we'll be watching for more showers to continue to push onshore later on tonight and into much of the day on Monday. So here's how the model kind of plays this out. You can see just scattered activity through the rest of this afternoon and into the evening with the possibility for some breaks, but we will see this continuing the ramp up with the possibility for more showers and the heavier storms to begin to push in as we head towards tomorrow morning. So we are not done just yet. So keep that in mind as this can continue and through even more of tomorrow afternoon. It won't be until the evening of Monday before we begin to see this quiet down. We'll send it back over to the Dave and Kendria for more. All right, thanks, Eric. Parts of St. Martin Parish are dealing with flooding from last night's and this morning's rain. Jason Lamb is live on the Grand Point Highway near I-10. Jason, tell us what you see. We're on Grand Point Highway just north of I-10 in St. Martin Parish. And with any break in the weather, no matter how small, the attention is now turning to those neighborhood streets, those neighborhood roads. You can see right back here, this is the remnants of a tree that fell over. It's already been cut up and cleared out of the roadway so cars can get through. One other big thing that we're seeing around here is those flooded and clogged storm drains. This road actually was completely impassable. It was flooded all the way through. That has since changed because we were following some fire crews down this road who are actually going storm drain by storm drain with a shovel and unclogging them, clearing them so some of this rainwater can get down those drains. Now, of course, this road is not completely clear. There's still some areas along the side where that storm drain is working as hard as it can, but there still is some standing water on the side, but definitely an improvement here in St. Martin Parish as the day continues. In St. Martin Parish, Jason Lamb, KATC TV3. Thanks, Jason. Meanwhile, parts of Youngsville are experiencing flooding of their own. Thanks to Tropical Storm Barry, Chris Welty is live at the Hill Ridge subdivision in Youngsville. Chris, did any water get into homes? Hey guys, we're here in the Hill Ridge subdivision in Youngsville, and unfortunately right now we're getting one of those scattered showers. This neighborhood doesn't need any more water. Fortunately, we're told that no water has gotten inside any homes. A lot of this flooding here in this subdivision is just street level flooding, uh, creeping up some driveways. But once again, we're told from neighbors that no water has gotten inside any home. So that's some good news. I'm going to walk a little bit and uh, you'll be able to see that some of these uh, neighborhoods, they have they have some shingles that have blown off. Uh, so some minor repairs will ne be will need to be done here in this neighborhood. But uh, one of the neighbors I talked to said that this neighborhood did flood in 2016 and water did get in homes back then. So we're seeing some good news. Although there is some street level flooding, 
fortunately, none of the water inside homes in this subdivision today. So that's some good news once again. But uh, we're told that there's also some ponds in this neighborhood and they tried to keep the water levels low, anticipating for heavy rain and everything that Barry had to bring. Guys, back to you. All right, thanks, Chris. Patients from Iberia Medical Center and other are in other hospitals today after IMC lost power early this morning. Several sources tell us ambulances brought patients to several different hospitals overnight. Still no word on what caused uh, the uh, emergency outage. And as the rain begins to subside, subside, Acadiana residents are beginning the cleanup process. Daniel Phillips joins us from the social news desk. And Daniel, people have been sending us pictures of their cleanup work. Yeah, and we, we brought a story to you a little bit earlier on when we were doing some of that wall to wall coverage. We had some pictures actually of the, the Worthmore Pharmacy that was out over towards rain. We had we'd done a story on that actually during our GMA on the road series. Eric Zernick had done a story on that and it looked like they had had some damage and they didn't take much time. They got some of the folks from the DOC, the City of Rain DOC, to go out there and, and get those things picked up. So we did have some of those pictures sent into us. Again, that was out over towards uh, towards rain. We've had a lot of pictures coming into the newsroom, and, and we have our crews out uh, all over the place trying to bring as many stories to you as, as we can find. But some of the best sources that we do have is going to be the pictures that you guys send to us via Facebook, via email, via Twitter, all of those pictures we continue to cycle through and, and go through and, and keep looking at. And those are some of the best sources uh, that we have out there. So please keep sending them to us as long as you can do it safely. Um, send it over to our Facebook page. We've seen pictures of flooding down along the coastline. We've seen pictures of the storm surge, wind damage. We've seen people having fun. There's a guy who's out there cutting his grass, showing the true importance of getting that yard work done, no matter the circumstances. So. Uh, Send those pictures in, send those reports in to us, do it safely, and we will go through them. And, and those that we see, we'll put them up on air, and that helps us tell the story, and that helps kind of guide our coverage as well. In the Tech Center, I'm Daniel Phillips. Guys? Okay, thanks, Daniel. Right now we have on the phone uh, Stephanie Wagner. She's the Red Cross Regional Director of Communications and Marketing. Good afternoon, Stephanie. How are you today? I'm doing great. How are you? Great. Um, we were talking about uh, how the Red Cross always helps out during the times of disaster. Uh, do you have any shelters that are open or what are what are the ongoing efforts with you? Yeah, so we've been coordinating very closely with the Office of Emergency Preparedness preparedness and our elected officials to kind of assess the needs as the storm was pre-landfall, as it made landfall, and as it kind of continues to impact the area. So we have great partners in the United Way of Acadiana as well as Catholic Charities and the Food Bank. We did support some reception centers across the Lafayette area overnight, and uh, we're continuing to reassess with all of those different entities to determine the needs and see the best way that we can support our communities. And how can people impacted by the storm get help? They can call 1-800-RED-CROSS. That is our national disaster line. So they'll be able to provide their information and that will be transitioned down here to our teams on the ground so we can support them, uh, whether they take water into their home, um, if you just need a place to stay, and we'll be able to provide that for them. So some people may not be as you know familiar with what the Red Cross do. What are some of the things that you can help provide folks that are suffering from or need disaster aid? Yeah, so it, we respond to an average of 62,000 disasters a year nationwide. So we are, are no stranger, particularly here in Louisiana, to natural disasters of all magnitudes. There are a lot of different ways that we can provide assistance, whether it be providing cleanup kits if you did take water into your home. We can provide assistance by way of comfort kits. We also have some health and mental health resources for folks because when you do go through an incident like this, it can certainly be traumatic. And if you have medical supplies that you may have lost in your home, whether it be a wheelchair, glasses, medication, our health services team can help and support to also have those replaced. Now we know you have that phone number. If other people want some information, do you have a website or a Facebook page? Certainly, yeah. You can go to, uh, of course, you can call 1-800-RED-CROSS. You can go to redcross.org and our Facebook page is ARC Louisiana. All right. Well, thanks, Stephanie Wagner. She's the Red Cross Regional Director of Communications and Marketing, and she can uh, she was here to let us know about everything that the Red Cross is doing. Stephanie, thanks for joining us this afternoon, and you guys take care. Thank you. You as well. 
Well, Barry brought damage and destruction to Acadiana, but through it all, some good news came out of the storm. Take a look at this. A high water vehicle rescued three dogs in Youngsville. The vehicle brought the pups to higher ground at the end of the road, where their human picked them up and took them home safely. Barry. Hurricane Barry. <laughs> it's, it's tough out here. Yep, Daniel showed you this just a little while ago. Some people taking the maintenance of their home and yard very seriously this weekend. Take a look at this man in Sawgrass subdivision. It's here in Lafayette Parish, thanks to Sarah Richardson for sending it in. Well, another lawn enthusiast not afraid of a little Shaft. tropical storm. <laughs> Great job, Mason Kyle Arduin of Ville Platte. Thank you to thank you for sending in this adorable video. You can send in your pictures and and videos by posting on your Facebook page. You could see them on the news and stay safe. And before we go, let's check in one more time with meteorologist Eric Zernick. Yeah, taking a look at that radar, we continue to see some of the heavier bands moving through. Let's zoom in and take a look. Here's the broad picture, just continuing to see mainly light to moderate scattered activity. But what I have noticed is down again in those southeastern portions of Acadiana, mainly through Iberia Parish, now working up into St. Martin. We got a little band of some heavier rain right there. And then also down into a good portion of St. Mary Parish, some heavier bands of showers are pushing into the area. That's where we have a flash flood warning that continues until 1:15. So another hour or so with that warning, but more or less through the afternoon, we're just going to be watching for these rounds of showers moving out of the Gulf and pushing across the Cadiana. So you can see those extend way out into the Gulf with some heavier convection deep down, and that is what possibly could move through during the overnight hours and into Monday morning. So this is going to continue to last another 20. 24 to 36 hours before the rain finally completely gets out of Acadiana. So just continuing to monitor the situation when there are the breaks, you know, take care of what you need to get do, but make sure you're always keeping an eye on the weather to make sure if there are more rain bands heading your way that you can continue to seek shelter and avoid that flooding. Back to you, Dave and Kendria. All right. Well, we've got it. We've had a busy day so far, and we're going to be continuing to update you throughout the day. We're going to come back at the top of the hour at one and again, I believe at two o'clock. At yeah. least that's the plan that we have for right now. And uh, we we're talking about how social media really helps us out with all the pictures that we've gotten. But I've also noticed that there's a lot of authorities, Red Cross, as well as a local police and sheriff's departments and uh, local governments that have Facebook social media pages as well as websites that you can check out to find out information that you might need. Yeah, and again, we want you to send in your pictures or videos that you might have from the storm and the aftermath of the storm because we want to be able to see what you see. So please just send in whatever you have. You can do that through our social media accounts and on, on and on our website at KTC.com. All right, well, we're going to be back in about an hour or so. So in between now and then, you can check our social media pages. And as Kendria just said, check out our website, KTC.com. This KATC weather alert was sponsored by the Jim Olivier family of companies. To meet over hickory wood chips to every meal and make life taste better. Best fiends. Collect JoJo and tons of other cute characters. Solve thousands of fun puzzles. Download Best Fiends for free today. That's friends without the R. Best fiends. Toyota's Race Week is brought to you by your local Toyota dealer. Visit your local Toyota dealer today for amazing deals on your favorite Toyota. Toyota, let's go places. After years of reporting from the pits during cup races, NASCAR is honoring one of its top media members. 
That tops this week's edition of News and Notes. Uh, Jeff was a local level racer. Long time NASCAR pit reporter and magazine editor Dick Bergram has been named the recipient of the 2020 Squire Hall Award for NASCAR Media Excellence. Bergren becomes the ninth journalist to win this prestigious award, named after Ken Squire and Barney Hall, the first two recipients. Bergren will be honored during NASCAR's Hall of Fame induction ceremony and the festivities surrounding it on January 31st of 2020 and featured in an exhibit in the NASCAR Hall of Fame. So important. Easily identified by his trademark flat cap, Bergren was a fixture on NASCAR television coverage from 1981 through his retirement in 2012. In other news, folks, Front Row Motorsports and Shriners Hospitals for Children announcing their plans to honor and remember fellow Shriner David Pearson during the Bojangles Southern 500 at Darlington Raceway later this year during Labor Day weekend. David Reagan, a Shriner himself, helped unveil his car that will replicate the Holman Moody Racing Ford Torino Cobra that Pearson raced to his third and final NASCAR Cup Series championship in 1969, same year that Pearson became a Shriner. This week's Toyota's Did You Know question is, who is the first Canadian crew chief in the Cup Series? Think about it, we got the answer when we come back. It's only a matter of time until your check engine light comes on, or worse yet, your car needs repair. That could mean a big surprise auto repair bill. Those repairs are more expensive than ever. A new engine can be over $5,000, a new transmission over $4,000. That's why it's so important you call CarShield today. CarShield is the number one auto protection company in the country. I like CarShield because they were reliable, they were affordable, and they were trustworthy. Well, I think everybody should have car shield. Once your manufacturer's warranty is expired, there's just no big bills. If we needed repairs, car shield was there for us. Now it's your turn to get the peace of mind that comes with having car shield so you can worry less about auto repairs. Call or go online right now to get car shield for yourself. Friendly, knowledgeable, money saving representatives are available 24 hours a day. So if your car is 20 years old or newer, just tell us the make and model of your car or truck to get an instant plan quote. In a matter of minutes, you can be covered. I was elated that I had car shield. I was more than happy. It's no fun when you have a car and it's broken and you can't pay for it to get it fixed. Here's how CarShield works. When your car needs repair, you take it to your favorite mechanic or even your dealer, and CarShield gets them paid directly. That's why CarShield is America's number one auto protection provider. CarShield is just the best thing to take away the fear that when something is going to go wrong with your car, because it will, and CarShield is going to be there to back you up. My experience with CarShield is that they absolutely come through every time I need them. If my car breaks down, I can count on CarShield to cover it for me. CarShield definitely has my back. Now it's the time to make the smart choice and protect yourself from sky-high auto repair bills. Call now for a free and instant protection plan quote. It's only a matter of time until repairs are needed. And once your car breaks down, it's too late. Call 1-800-325-0927. That's 1-800-325-0927. I look up, and the minute I look up, I see this truck just coming dead smack into us. Upon impact, I just felt these really sharp pains, and I couldn't move at all. A reckless driver slammed into Michelle's car. My experience with the insurance company was like a disaster. Phone calls, no returns. Frustrated with the insurance company? Call Labor Earls at all sevens. We're always on your side. Without Labor Earls, I don't know what I would have done. I would have been totally lost. Toyota's Race Week is brought to you by Atlanta Motor Speedway. Papa John's Thursday Thunder Legends and Bandolero Racing returns to AMS in 2019. See tomorrow's stars of NASCAR today as they battle the Thunder Ring with high-flying action every Thursday through July 18th. Get all the details online at www.atlantamotorspeedway.com slash thunder. Now before the break, we asked you who is the first Canadian crew chief in the Cup Series? Well, let's find out if you're right in this week's Toyota's Did You Know? The answer.
answer is Cole Kern. Yeah, he was born in Mount Bridges, Canada, and after a successful racing career north of the border, Kern turned his attention to the mechanical side of things. He worked as an engineer for Richard Childress and Furniture Row Racing before becoming the crew chief for the number 78 car in 2014. He was the first and so far the only Canadian-born crew chief. Justin Haley's win at Daytona last Sunday not only shocked the NASCAR world, but it surprised him as well. Just looking to get some cup experience, Haley took advantage of a 17-car wreck and a rain-shortened race to win in just his third career start. We caught up with Haley in this week's Speedway Conversation. I really didn't have, my family's always been in racing, but I really wasn't grown up like around a racetrack. I, I, I don't think I was really ever to the racetrack. I saw Jason Leffler a few times at ORP run. Um, you know, we made some trips to Indy with my grandpa, but I personally feel like I had the desire to, to chase, become, chase becoming a race car driver. Um, I convinced my mom to, to let me get a quarter midget. At, at first, she said, as long as you can convince your stepdad to do it, um, then y'all can have fun. And that, that wasn't too hard of a convince, being he's a, a gearhead himself. So without them two, my stepdad and my mom, uh, obviously this wouldn't have been possible. And, and everyone else in my family for believing in me and giving me faith. But um, yeah, I don't know, it's pretty surreal. point in everyone's life where you have to make a decision uh, if it's you're playing high school football you know are you gonna go play college ball or, or if you're racing are you gonna take it seriously and, and there was a time and point where I had to um, you know get homeschooled and take it seriously because I was on the road so much and and uh, I, w I wouldn't be able to take it seriously if my uh, family didn't support me through through it all so they gave up a lot um, they moved my, my family moved down to North Carolina a few years back to, to help me chase my dream when I started running Kane and East with, with Harry Scott and Justin Marks. Um, so they, they took the trip down with me and, and uh, like I said, without them, it's, uh, this wouldn't be possible. When we return, we take a look back at another popular underdog, the man they call the Polish Prince. Stay with us. Toyota's Race Week is brought to you by your local Toyota dealers. Visit your local Toyota dealer today for amazing deals on your favorite Toyota. Toyota, let's go places. At Courtesy Chevrolet GMC in Bro Bridge.